Romelu, hey. great to see you. Good to see you too. Incredible to think it's almost 10 years to the day since we first sat down the last time around. I think the first question I asked them was, what does it feel like to be here? I'm going to ask you the same thing again. <laughs> How is it? Um, it feels good. It feels good. Like I said, I feel blessed. I feel blessed with the opportunity. I'm very grateful. Um, but yeah, I think eventually it was meant to happen. You know, I think as a as a person you have to dream and um you know but you have to set yourself targets as well and uh yeah the opportunity came along i think at the right time because you know the club wants to keep winning and uh you know um you gave me an opportunity and i think for me um the way how my career has been going the last few years i think it was the chance of a lifetime so you know now it's time to put those words into practice on the pitch and, you know, keep uh, working and, you know, hopefully winning as well. Do you feel there's an element of almost unfinished business coming back? Yeah, I have to be honest, um, a little bit. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, my journey has been my journey. I think, um, you know, I learned a lot. I think the basics of my career, everything um, that I needed to learn, I learned here 10 years ago in the dressing room with a lot of personalities and um, you know players that want it all and I was there to witness it firsthand in the training sessions, the way how they conduct themselves uh, in the gym with the physios and stuff like that. So, you know, those basics I took them for the rest of my career and I think you see eventually like I put up big numbers, um, won the title with Inter last year. So it's all down to the basics that I've learned and uh, you know the stuff that I learned along the way and I think you know now at 28, you know, I'm a totally different player. I became a man now as well. I'm a father now as well. So life has changed. So, you know, now I just look forward to help the team and uh, be available for the manager, you know, whenever he needs me. You're already reading my mind on my questions. You're writing them for me, I can tell. <laughs> because I wanted to ask you about that journey, as you rightly said, 10 years ago. Big personalities, big dressing room that you're walking into. I guess it's a, a different kind of dynamic now when we look at the, the, the setup of this current squad. Yeah, 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 you know, at the time, I think uh, the players, they were all like well in their 30s when I was there. You know, I was uh, one of the few young players at the time with uh, Ryan Bertrand and uh, Daniel Sturridge and Josh for six months when he was there and uh, Nathaniel Chalo, but we were like the young kids, like we were the five of us, but then all the rest, they were like all well into their 30s or, you know, in their peak. And, you know, you could see that was a team that was uh, winning for the last, the years before. And then, you know, for me, it was just all about learning and watching. And, you know, if I would have game time, you know, trying to make the best, but obviously, you know, my journey had, was what it was. and. But I would say, like, I will never look in a bad way to that experience because he may be the player that I am today. You and Didier hit it off, didn't you? I know you always looked up to him and he literally looked up to you as well. You always had a very good bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was always like, it was always having a, a eye, like, you know, watching me when I was working and always telling me what I had to improve. And to this day, you know, we spoke, I think, uh, three or four days ago. Um, and the week before we spoke, um, about this opportunity and I thought you know like we have a good relationship we speak almost every week two or three times so it was uh, only right that uh, you know I included him in my decision because you know he's been like that mentor um, along with Analka they've been that, that mentor for me in the in the last few years and you know I think uh, when I spoke to him or when I met him 10 years ago you know we still have that same bond he's even become even better um, throughout the years because, you know, he saw me growing as a man, he met me as a kid and, you know, he knew that the, the, the way how I idolized him as a kid was, was real. So um, now to have him really as a friend in my corner, you know, it means the world to me, yeah, for sure. And then he came back and, and won the title as well, so no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ambition is always to win. Uh, we ain't going to lie about that, but, you know, at the end of the day, I see us, ourselves as hunters. Now we have to go and try you know, try as hard as possible to be competitive in whatever game that we play. And that's the, that's the main thing that we have to show to the people. You join a very hungry group, don't you? The Champions League winners, of course, but a very hungry group. How many of the, the current squad do you know well? I really got to know very well. Uh, you know, Mason Mount, Rich James, you know, all the academy players because they were here at the time. So, you know, we saw each other a couple of times. Aspie, of he came over the summer. Yeah, yeah I spoke to Kai Havertz. Um, when we played in the Europa League together and I told him to go to Chelsea. I don't know if he remembers that conversation. 
But um, yeah, uh, yeah, Azuma, Chris Zuma, I know him really well. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of the boys. I think more of the half of the squad that I know really well. So I don't think I need time to get to know the personalities. Like I uh, really gel in. I speak multiple languages as well. So it'll be easy for me to to fit in with the team. You're putting us all to shame, Romelu. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke about how much your game has evolved. I know we were speaking sort of off camera about the, the, the time you spent in Italy and you, yeah. you had to adapt and change your game, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. You know, I was known for being somebody that, you know, used to run behind all the time. Now it's more like complete. I think the, the, the way how football is played in Italy for me was the way what Antonio Conte was asking for me on the pitch was more being the focal point of the team. So. At the start, it was very, very difficult until we had one conversation where he really like said to me, like, if you don't improve on it, like, I'm not going to play you. And then, you know, obviously, like, I really like started working individually on it with uh, with one of the defenders over there. And, you know, I just mastered, mastered it and then it just took my game to the next level. And, you know, I think the thing with me is like whatever game plan that the manager has in the game, I just can't do both. If he wants me to be a focal point, I can do that. If he wants me to run behind defences and stretch to create space for the others, I can do that. So it's fine. As we're talking managers, let's talk Thomas Tuchel. Yeah. Tell us about what he said to you about your role and, and how impressed you've been with him as a coach. I've been very impressed because, you know, I told him um, I was obviously I'm watching the team, you know, as a fan, like you watch the team and I told him uh, what I liked about him is that uh, every game he has a different game plan. And that's where it really sets him apart. That, you know, every game I was trying to figure out what the team was doing to try and score a goal. Um, obviously, you know, see me going to Italy, I look at the game a bit differently now, like, because it's a lot of patterns of play and tactically and stuff like that. But so for, when I saw his team playing, I saw that every game that he had, his team had a different game plan. So I was like, I like that, like, because you really think about how breaking teams down and. Um, yeah, also the system. I know the system, you know, with the Belgium national team, we play the same system. And then, you know, um, when we spoke, you know, he asked me, like, just to be a leader, you know, be available. And he knows that I'm flexible. I can play in a two, I can play, you know, by myself. And he knows that, you know, I can relieve the pressure of other players and, uh, you know, trying to help. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, at this stage of my career, I think, you know, the leadership I've shown throughout the last few years, I think, you know, I can help the team. But then at the end of the day, you know, I just want to be there and be available for him, help the teammates win the games and that's that. We're certainly glad to have you back because you always seem to enjoy playing against Chelsea. That must have been a strange dynamic for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was different all the time. And especially like in the first year when I left the club, um, it was weird, very, very weird. I think the first game when I... I played at, when I was at Everton and we played Chelsea when I left on a permanent. That was really one of the weirdest games for me because I knew all the boys. It feels good to be back in those colours for real. It certainly does. You come back to a very competitive Premier League, it seems. How yeah. exciting a time is it for the, the game over here at the moment? I think the league has been, is as competitive as ever now because now you really have uh, five or six teams that can really like go into the top four for sure but to win the league yeah you have six teams that can really try to go and win it so every game is going to be a battle but you know i think the team is up for it i think uh, the manager is going to prepare for us for it and you know i can't wait to start working with the players and you know just you know try to add something different to to the team I don't know how much of the game at the weekend you saw, but you actually had a standing ovation before the game without even being in the ground, which was quite an achievement. What's it going to mean to you to be back in front of those fans again? It would mean a lot. You know, I think it means the world to me because, you know, it's something that I wanted as, since I was 10 years old. You know, play at Stamford Bridge and, you know, uh, you know, hopefully win to uh, trophies with the club. You know, something that I wanted since I was 10 years old. I think people know uh, what Chelsea means to me. And now to be back here, I think it's the right time because, you know, I'm hungry myself. It's not because I want something abroad that, you know, I came in and I want to relax. I just want to keep building on what I've done. Finally then, they're going to be so excited to see you, the fans watching this as well. What would be your message to them watching this right now? Um, I'm going to give my maximum. 
um, you know, hopefully keep winning trophies and, you know, do my work on the pitch, not talk too much, but, you know, you'll see what I can do. We wish you luck. Thank you very much.